watching this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, with me, I'm very lucky to have been joined by my very well and colleague who happens to be Ms. Haja Sati. I happen to be Shazad Hassan Khan and we hope and pray that everybody out there is doing wonderfully well and that you're ready to kickstart your day with us. But first things first, hello Haja, Assalamu alaikum, how are you feeling today? Wa alaikum assalam, thank you so much, Jazakallah Khair Shazad for introducing me since it's the month of the August and we yeah. have seen that how there's a lots of greenery lined up, especially when you are commuting from your house to your office and you will find there are lots of stalls with their buntings, flags, uh, I mean shirts and merchandise which is linked to the August, which is linked to the Azadi, to the freedom, badges and what not and uh, I find also a lot of what do you call that bajas and I don't know what do you call it in Pee. English yeah, yeah, yeah it's very <laughs> annoying but I think they're very attractive because they have very vibrant colors yeah. lined across and the, I, I um, think people have actually now you know they have this um, they've recognized the very tone of that baja you know <laughs> yes. so wherever it may probably be right you know even if it is you know kind of blown Yes. Uh, in the month of September, <laughs> we will still be reminded of 14th of August yes, probably because yes, ladies yes. and gentlemen, that happens to be our Independence Day and a lot of people are certainly going to buy those bajas in bulk. But not just that, mm. you know, where you actually spoke about bunting, yes. you know, so I've always had this habit of, you know, wearing or carrying my national flag yeah, on whatever dress that. I'm I've wearing. That, yes. So I've been thinking for long that I really need to stop over there and get a few badges for myself because what okay. happens is that you one day, you know, you're going to lose one of the pain oh, and then unfortunately yes. you yes. cannot use it. Yes. But having said so, ladies and gentlemen, you know, there's a bigger message to freedom. There's right. a bigger message to freedom and sovereignty. And that's something which I would want Hajra uh, to kind of shed light sure, on. You know, sure. when we talk about a sovereign state, for example, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, yes. What comes to your mind in the first place? So, I, I always felt the words or the jargons like Qom, Batan, Millat, uh, country. It's just a, a, I mean, fancy addition to the Urdu literature. But then deep down, I feel, no, it's not just a fancy addition to the uh, Urdu dictionary. Rather, it represents the ideas and the concepts hmm. that are ingrained in our national genetic identity, which makes us Pakistani, which makes us part of the whole uh, call Pakistan and we strive for that and I think we've always talked about it uh, and when it comes to my nationalism and patriotism and I've seen a lot of people asking this question uh, what has this country contributed to that and I think that's a hugely misperception that's a very wrong question to ask in the first place because the right question is what have we Video, contributed yeah, to this country in the first place because this is how uh, the spirit of the nationalism the zeal survives and especially if you look at the developed civilization, this is how they contributed, right? Every person uh, is a responsible citizen. Every person has his responsibility towards the national interest and make sure that he look after his community in the first place and not just think in a myopic, very uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, self-interested sort of a terms, right? And, in the and first Hajar, place. thank you so much for saying that because ladies and gentlemen, there was a reason why I asked this or posed this question to Hajra and that was that when we speak of freedom, when we talk about Islamic Republic of Pakistan, it's not just that that we are talking only about Muslims. True. I think we're talking about all those Pakistanis who are out there. May True. them be Muslims, may them be Hindus, may them be Sikhs, may them be Christians, True. or may them be from any other True. religious walk of life. True. You know, so when we come or when we talk about patriotism, it certainly does not only come from Muslims. You know, True. obviously everybody who resides within the country is a Pakistani to us. And this is what the father of the nation even spoke True. about. True. You know, father of the nation, even on 11th of August, back in 1947, I haven't actually spoke on this occasion and I've written it down so that I can narrate it for people who are sure. out there as well. Sure. That uh, in his historic speech in, on Thursday in 1947, he said he laid down the foundation of a modern, tolerant and progressive Pakistan guaranteeing every citizen equal rights regardless of creed and gender. Qaidi yes. Azam's vision is embodied in the constitution of Pakistan that envisioned minorities to freely profess and practice their religion culture. And that has been said over and over again. That's true. And not just that. In That's addition true. to that, for all of those people who really want to, you know, hoist flags, you know, on, yes. on the rooftops yes. and probably put yes. them on their car and whatnot. Ladies and gentlemen, we really need to understand what does it represent. We might have spoken about it before, but, you know, let us remind you that, you know, that white part within our flag represents the minorities. True. And 
I think what we really need to do over here today is to kind of talk about them. You know, where are we in terms of minorities when Absolutely. we speak of them? Absolutely. And, and thank you so much, Azad, for quoting Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, and especially when we talk about a National Minority Day, which is observed on 11th of August, 9, um, 11th of August generally. Uh, so, and, and I, I think Pakistan was made based on our ideology of Islam. So, Muslims hmm. struggle. But it's not that the Muslims only contributed towards this struggle. Uh, minorities also contributed to that. And I think... We we can feel the pain of minorities because in the subcontinent, Muslims were minorities in the first place. So we were Muslims not by the definition, but by the discrimination that True. we felt there. And that is why we strive towards it. And that is why we are more considerate towards our minorities yeah. in the first because place. Because we have and gone through it ourselves. Of course, of and, course. And since we have lived through it, we have gone yes. through it ourselves. And we certainly make sure that, you know, everybody feels yes. like a Pakistani. Yes. And when we talk about nationalism, when we talk about patriotism, ladies yes. and gentlemen, it does not really have to do anything with anyone's religion. So everybody needs to be equal, everybody needs True. to be inclusive. And at the same time, our religion actually tells us how we really need to be kind to people from every walk true, of life, maybe from true. any other different religious that's walk of true. life. And it's only Islam which tells us that you're not supposed to force anybody. True. It's True. our religion who tells us, True. who gives us the uh, message of peace. And that's certainly what we are talking about today. And uh, I'm really happy in the first place because, you know, I, I feel excited when, you know, we become the voice of the people who might not have been heard in the longest time. True. I think True. that's something which I wanted to do. And uh, I certainly, if I have to kind of speak my heart out, I even do not like referring to them yeah, as yeah. minorities. Yes, and that's, yes. that's one thing. So let's first of all decide, you know, me and Haja over here today, that, okay, what, how do you think that we can refer to them rather than saying minorities? Pakistani brethren, ladies and yes, gentlemen. Yes, Pakistani. I think that's it. You know, yes. so let's not go anywhere else. Let's not put religion in it because when it comes to patriotism, when, it's, when it comes down to nationalism, Ladies and gentlemen, we all are equal and that's how we want it to be. And that's what the Pakistanis will do for the rest of our lives. So without any further ado. So we would like to introduce our guest and uh, we would like to kickstart our conversation forward. And uh, we want to celebrate each and every Pakistani like yes. Shazad mentioned in the first place. So it's about being Pakistani and it is about being a Pakistani. We're very glad that we have been joined by uh, David Elbert, who happens to be a former member of the National Commission for Minorities. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to our show and thank you so much for coming to our show. Thank you very much. And always very smart, always very well spoken and uh, just like your son, <laughs> or probably should I say that, you know, your son son is just like <laughs> Thank uh, you his father. Thank so it's you. wonderful to have you over here alongside Mr. Albert David. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined with somebody who happens to be a development practitioner. Ladies and gentlemen, she is Ms. Jaya Jaggi. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you today? Hi. Namaste. Satsiyakal. Good morning. Thank, Thank you, you so for much for joining me. us. Wonderful to have you over here. Namaste. Satsiyakal. Thank you so much for joining. And alongside her, ladies and gentlemen, True. once again, because we certainly wanted, you know, our audiences to understand the religious perspective over here, where I've mentioned that our religion is all about peace, inclusivity, equity, equality. And political perspective. Yes, in the first and, place. and political yes. perspective too. So we're very lucky that we've been joined by one of our very handsome religious scholars over here Correct. inside the PTV World Studios. He happens to be Mr. Professor Abdul Basit Mujahid Saab. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you feeling today? Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm good uh, because this is August, as Hajra was saying, and yes. you were also describing that this is the month of August, a month of celebrations and a month of uh, reviewing our policies regarding our beloved country, Pakistan, and that's why we are here to discuss. And that's why we are here, Pakistan, thanks today. Zindabad, which is why, you know, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to move on to Mr. Albert David, sir. It's a very important day, not just for, uh, for, for minorities within the country, but I think for each and every Pakistani out there. How do you think that we need to highlight the importance and significance of this day? And how do you think it will create that triple effect which needs to go out? Thank you very much. And just before I start, I mean, I felt so proud when you introduced me through my son. What a proud moment for a father. <laughs> 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 <You know? laughs> when, when you introduced But you have started to look younger than him now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. No, I mean, I was just hearing uh, the both of you just talking just before the start of the pro I mean, when, when you were starting the program. I think what you said that this day is not to be celebrated by the minorities of Pakistan only. Because when Qaeda Azam was speaking, he was not just speaking to the minorities of Pakistan. He was speaking to the whole nation, to every Pakistani. And I think we just, you know, limit ourselves to that one paraphrase of Qaeda's speech. Right. of 11th August but if we just go through the speech 
there is a lot more that he said in that speech and Please you know uh, and you know he said i mean uh, very i mean very soon we will cease to be muslims or we will cease to be hindus not in a religious uh, yeah, yeah. sense yeah. but in the political sense when we will all be Pakistan. pakistanis mm -hmm. and equal pakistani citizens and i think that is the spirit that we need to promote it is time that we come out of that divide of minority and majority yeah you know we are pakistanis i think the um, the allegiance i mean the uh, Right, right. So we will carry forward sure, this sure. conversation, uh, and and we come to uh, Mr. Jaggi. So, uh, uh, since you represent uh, a community, and and we always say that we are Pakistanis, regardless of any caste, gender, creed, or whatever, right? Um, so when we talk about celebrating our uh, religious freedoms and and celebrating the, uh, so Pakistani state has invested a lot when it comes to um, the Sikhism, because obviously it is the land of the Baba Guru Nanak, right? So we have this Yatris coming in. So, how do you see all of this development, especially in the land of Pakistan? Okay. First of all, thank you so very much for having me and I'm really happy that at least we are having this conversation going on, particularly highlighting how there are people who have different religious beliefs, different re backgrounds as uh, their religious freedom is concerned and then we are, we are trying to promote the diversity and how this diversity brings beauty. I would say that um, during the last few years, government probably has taken a lot of steps in different capacities. We, we, we saw how National Commission for Minorities was there probably getting and promoting a lot of um, rights regarding minorities. Apart from it, we, we, say, see, oh, we had also seen Kartarpur corridor and how the government has invested in it. We, we also have been talking about how there have been quotas for job, how government has been supporting young people for their education as well, belonging to different religious minority communities. So I would say that yes, there has been a progression uh, when, when we see the development in terms of different sectors which actually bring or at least mainstream people who have different religious beliefs. And then I would also say that there is a long way still to go to yeah. properly integrate them into different socio-political and economic centers and not just symbolically but in true sense. That's very true. Now moving to you Professor Saab since you are also Professor of Political Science and when we talk about um, so how we felt as a minority in a broader subcontinent and how we were treated as a Muslims and when we talk about the freedom struggle so it was not just the Muslims who contributed towards that. There were lots of other um, uh, I mean, castes and creeds that contributed towards that. Uh, so how do you see this entire development when I say that uh, we were Muslims by the discrimination not by the definition in the first place when we talk about subcontinent. In fact, if we uh, talk about just not subcontinent, but uh, as uh, we know that uh, Pakistan uh, was created on an ideology and that ideology is based on Islam and we, we look at Islam that how it looks to humanity. First thing I must uh, mention here that you look in uh, Holy Quran, there are a lot of places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Ya ayyuhal insan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing humanity as a whole. Yes. And uh, at the same time, we look at Prophet, peace be upon him, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He is not just rahmat for Muslims. He is not just for humanity. He is rahmatullil alameen. Yes. So that message we must know and we, we must practice also that thing to to be very kind to every creature and every human being in, uh, in particular. And at the same time, we look uh, towards Prophet, peace upon him, look at uh, his social contract, which is called the Accord of Medina. So that Accord of Medina, that was inclusive. All uh, those who were living in Medina, whether they were Jews, where there were Christians, where there those who were uh, Mushrikeen of Makkah, they all were in, included into that. So that model is truly followed by Qaeda Azam. And as uh, Shahzad, you were referring to his very famous speech, and that is a policy statement as well, because Pakistan was announced on 11th August, you know, that uh, that is a policy. And uh, I am happy on that, that to, to some extent, whole... Uh, governments and state itself followed that spirit of not only Islam but of Qaeda Azam's vision as well. Exactly and thank you <laughs> sorry thank you so much sir for reminding you know our audiences about this and Haja which is why you know I would certainly want you to kind of reflect on this you know imagine that you know I think on in a very state level I think that we have done quite quite well and it's because right. the facts for right. example you know let's 
talk about the uh, Kartarpur initiative, not just that, let's talk about Nankana Saab. You know, if not Nankana Saab, right. let's talk about Panja Saab. Katas Raj Temple. Yeah, Katas Raj Temple. Yes. Let's talk about, you know, how I have yes. a lot of friends. Uh, you happen to be Hindus, you know, he regularly, they, they would come over to my place and, you know, Yes, the, yes, and I think I'm going to kind of say, I, I'm going to mention it over here that it's because of my parents right. uh, that I have understood that, you know, how it is to be a minority in the country because my parents have never told me that, okay, you know, if, if a friend from a very relig different religious background is going to come over to my place, that it's a no, no, they, it has never been like that. It's like a guest should always be welcome and that's the spirit and that's, that's what our religion actually tells us. So that's imagine true. that there's religious tourism that's and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful and I'm very glad over here, uh, Haja, that, you know, when we speak of religious tourism, and obviously no, no, but let me complete okay, when sure. we speak of religious tourism, how different initiatives are taken right. on government level and right. how, you know, they've been provided with all of those facilities to you know to kind of make sure that they're comfortable over here it has been going on and, and for I the last couple of decades structurally government also supports them because you find the quotas especially in the government institution and obviously the purpose of these quotas is because there's always debate between the merit and the quota system and the purpose of these quota system is to uh, have more integration and to be more inclusive when we talk about uh, the different strands of people and, who are living and there. that's exactly what I wanted to talk yes. about you know so I'm one of those people because now in 2023 are we seriously going to give them a quota or do you think that there needs to be a free representation? I think that's a question for Mr. Albert David over here. You know, why don't you contest in elections? Why would you want a quota? You know, let's let's put it this way that, you know, if we are to kind of eradicate, unfortunately, whatever 0.5 or 10% of the menace which still exists, you know, when we talk about minorities, do you think having a quota is a better idea? Your opinion on that or do you think that, you know, let's do it on merit? Two things. Personally, I am against quota, yeah, and I think so it should much. be. I think it should be open competition, yes. and I think um, every Pakistani should have equal opportunity, and plus they should compete. Right. True. You know, whether it's jobs, whether it's education, whether it's in the political arena, people should start thinking of competing mm -hmm. rather than sort of you know just. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to say that in Urdu. Wo besaki. कोटे की बेसाकी का सहारा ना लें। That's what my, that's what I personally and मैं अभी यहीं पे उर्दू में कहूँगा क्योंकि वो वरना फिर पांच परसेंट ही रह जाएगा। Exactly, exactly. But on the other hand, I think you know, and it happens in a lots of societies where there are sort of marginalised societies. You have to give them that opportunity. True. So in that sense, I think yeah, quota should be there. And I know a lots of young people have now come in CSS just because of the quota. But but I think quota is not the answer. The yeah. answer is let's be competitive, let's be part of the mainstream and let's fight our way through. I mean, like all the other 65% youth of Pakistan does, let's be part of the 65% and not the 3%. True. Right. right. So that's, that's, yeah. that's Th my take. Thank you so much for saying that, which is why I would want to add over here. You know, the, inter uh, the conversation is going to get more interesting because we are on the same page now. Right. So now what I would want to ask you is that way you mentioned about how there are different marginalized communities yes. who would still want a quota and yeah. it's because so that they can be heard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, that's important. Right. But over here in Pakistan since 1947 till 2023, if we are to talk about it, do you think that it's changing now? That now, you know, obviously the representation could go beyond 5% as well because if we are on open merit, True. you know, from any other, yes. you know, if we are to talk about, for example, contesting in elections, you know, mm -hmm. anybody and everybody mm -hmm. could do that, you know, mm -hmm. so that means that there's, there's going to be better representation and it's all about Pakistan by the end of the day, you know, it's not about agree. the religion anyways, agree. right? Agree. No, I completely agree, uh, but I'll just come back on the marginalized yeah. It's it's not just the minorities. You have to look at sort of places in Sindh, places in Balochistan, you know, the areas. The remote areas. Kirk, the remote areas. I mean, they also need representation and that's why there is a quota for them as well. Yeah. So it's not just limited to, to the minorities. There is a quota for women too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but on the other hand, I think the thing you are saying is, yes, the government has taken some steps. Mm -hmm. But we need a societal uh, improvement, improvement as well. Yeah. As well, you know, um, we still, uh, you know, hear those derogatory uh, words for the minorities. And and let's let's be honest. I mean, it happens in our society, and that sort of a thing is embedded in our society. It's not just against the minorities. It's the haves and the have-nots, and people do discriminate. So right. I think we need to have a better society, a more pluralistic society. Unfortunately. Polarization has increased when I see sir, um, in the last sir, few years. Sir, if we are to point it out, you know, yes. because that's the whole uh, motive of us sitting over here exactly. and talking about it. If we are to point it out, what yes. is that 
segment of society who would still come up with derogatory remarks for people from different walks of religions. You know, that's something which we really need to talk about over here. Is it the more elitist class, you know, which are very educated or is it the more remote class, you know, where unfortunately okay. you go into different villages, you will see people passing on remarks. Is it the lack of education which causes it? And, you know, so let's talk about it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to be honest? Yeah, yeah, I want sure. you to All be right. honest, okay. dead honest. Okay, so let me just point out one thing. We see these job advertisements which come in the newspapers from yep. different government departments. And would you believe until last week, there's a job advertisement which says a job for sweepers and it says the qualification is that the person should be from the minority communities. Okay. That is the qualification. Yeah, and now, you're very right you on know, this. Now, this advertisement is not just by sort of given by anyone. It goes through that whole process. True. True. It's approved by the top, you know, if it's a ministry or a government department or whatever, it's approved by the person who's sitting at the top. So you can just see, I mean, True. that's what I'm trying to say, that it is so embedded and it is so acceptable that I think it is now time that we start looking at these things. True. These minor things, this this we could have be a great minor. Impact, yeah, yes. this creates an impact on Pakistan's, you know, um, uh, I, I would say um, the look of Pakistan the abroad, abroad, the image of Pakistan yeah. abroad as well. That is how people look at Pakistan then, and I think that is where we have to be very sensitive. Thank you so much and, and for I, saying I that. I, 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 because you know where. Uh, David, Saab, David, David Saab has mentioned that you know that's, that the image is actually going to be very deteriorated abroad or across Pakistan. Now, the same problem exists when you go to England. Well, for example, because I've witnessed it over there, I, I, as far I, I, as you go in you know, for, for a job interview, you know, they're going to either keep you as somebody who's going to clean the offices or somebody other than that. You know, for all those Bengalis who are out there, for all those <laughs> Pakistanis out there, for all of those Indians out there. So as soon and, as you introduce yourself, you know, they already know you know, and, what and sort of a job. Thank you so much for putting it out there, especially because you are referring or alluding to a broader phenomena between the majorities and the yeah. minorities in the first place. And let's talk about the colonial uh, connotations uh, regarding these minorities and majorities because before the colonial Raj came in, there was no minority and majority. All were the subjects of the empire True. in the first place. And no one thought that, okay, this is the community, so it's different, and this one is the community, and this different. They were all allegiance. They had the allegiance to the royal family in the first place right um, so we need to dispel this impression decolonize our mindset about the minority and majority so Abdul Basit sir please comment on that so why are we unable to break from that colonial mindset of majority and minority yeah. in the first place because before the colonial times came in there was no majority and minority concept yeah, in the uh, first place very rightly Hajra you mentioned this thing look at almost uh, 1000 years there is a Muslim rule in this subcontinent <laughs> And a look at that rule, uh, whether that is uh, Sultanate period or Mughal administration. So at that time, uh, Muslims were not in majority in that place. But how they managed, because they have given uh, proper rights to every citizen at that time in their state. Mm -hmm. So you rightly mentioned that uh, this menace, like other menaces, uh, when colonization started here, so diction changed mm -hmm. and, and, and you look this is not just uh, uh, because today we are uh, discussing this uh, different uh, religiously different uh, minorities or different groups otherwise this in, is in society those as uh, Albert Saab was saying that uh, haves and have nots yeah. so in that you see uh, this is not issue of just uh, differently uh, having religious identity mm -hmm. This must be uh, corrected, mm -hmm. but uh, we must not think in this, uh, this way only. And one thing more, look, this is the need of art that we decolonize each and everything. That's Just true. not thinking, but a style of governance at the same time, what is our societal norms, we have to decolonize them uh, in a proper way. And, yeah. and thank you so much for brilliantly putting it out there. So Ajay, I will come to you and because you alluded to very important thing when you we were talking about, which is about we need to have better integration uh, when we talk about um, I mean different communities of Pakistan. So can you be more elaborate? What do you mean by that? And what sort of vision uh, do you imagine when we talk about integration? Uh, sure, and thank you so very much for putting it out that way. 
probably we have that sitting where we are we are very inclusive as right. Shahzad has already been mentioning that he probably has been brought up that way that he has an understanding of a sense of human rights but we also need to understand that there are a lot of areas in Pakistan where probably people are not that educated True. not very really self-aware and conscious of the concept of human rights and probably particularly about minority rights and we have been seeing instances where the rights have been violated and that's where it comes in that sometimes there are, and most of the times there are there are two approaches number one you work at grassroots level and then number two you work at policy level we might be having few of the policies but are they actually reaching out to those people or are those people capable enough to reach out to those so we also need to see that if there is a gap how to bridge that gap and then I would I would still say that maybe this these particular opportunities or the development has that has already been done probably was just affecting a particular segment even in religious minorities yeah. and we also need to reach out to all those places where people are not yet right. aware or maybe are they still have their conscious or unconscious biases or stereotypes regarding religious minorities yeah. so, so so you know let's let's talk about this you know okay. because before heading out towards a short break let's discuss that what what are you know do you think uh, those baseless assumptions people make about minorities in our country. Let's let's put it this way so that people have a better understanding that you know, so, so let's start with you, Jaya. And be more sensitive yeah. about it, how to approach this issue. Yes, I think, for example, we were talking about what the government has been doing and we, we also mentioned how government has been supporting or protecting the religious worship places of religious minorities. In the recent past, we have seen few instances of violent extremism and radicalization in the country, uh, particularly when someone's security and life was in threat just because of their religious identity. True. Are people really comfortable moving around in the country and exposing themselves to a particular religious identity? And this is the kind of the survey we need to make sure that uh, are we just closing our eyes and say, okay, everything is good and people, people are considering themselves a part of the country or no? there are some underlying issues or the problems that we really need to resolve. We, even apart, though we have been seeing this development, but still the last few instances where, incidents where we have realized that probably there are particular segments of the society who are not sensitive towards religious yeah, minorities, yeah. for example, not protecting the religious places. And we have seen these attacks and where the entire community had to True. actually Eventually, relocate from yeah. that particular. Uh, and uh, also yeah. just to quickly mention, I, I really appreciate how it was resolved th through religious leaders. And then obviously they came up, they, they educated people who were there, probably they did not have understanding. And sometimes we also feel pity for those people that probably they did not get that enabling environment to get that kind of education that probably mm. Shazad and I received. But this is where right. we all need to put up or at least come up together that wherever you see someone not able to understand the human rights, at least educate people, break that stereotype over there. And this is how probably we see and some we, And we progress. certainly need to do that because True. imagine, you know, more than my school did, I think my parents did it for me because mm. I don't remember Shocking. that in my school, my teacher was True. telling me that how we really need to be inclusive True. and, you know, Respectful, that our religion yeah. tells us equity. Yes, it talks about, you know, equal rights for yes. everybody, but they never mentioned it in context of, you know, how minorities needs to be. True. You know, so I think it's more of, of my parents. But sir, if, you know, I'm, I want to come back to you. But it's such a sensitive issue that we certainly, on this topic, I do not want to make a generic statement, right? Sure. Because there will be always, you know, those type of people who un unfortunately are going to bring Pakistan's name down just mm -hmm. by doing all of that illiterate stuff because they have no mm -hmm. certain education, their parents haven't told them about, you know, how it needs to be or they haven't even understood their own religion. Which is why I'll move on to, uh, uh, you know, Professor Abdul Basim Jai Saab, but what assumptions do you think are there which still exist about minorities and people make it you know, just like that. Right. Two very important points. I mean, number one, um, you know, you said certain people or certain groups doing things which then affect Pakistan Obviously. and and of course the all uh, of us. All of all yeah. of us. I just want to add over here that fortunately, these sorts of things, or when you sort of talk about persecution or discrimination, fortunately in Pakistan this is not state sponsored. And yes. this True. is yes. the act of individuals. Thank you so right? much for saying that. Okay, I mean, if you just move across the border, you just see what is happening over True. there. You know, uh, let's not. I mean, let's talk about what happened in Manipur. I mean, um, just yeah, yeah. just exactly a few weeks the, ago. Yeah. The train incident, right? Exactly. So I think we are fortunate that you know, yes, the government needs to do more. The state, uh, the state needs to do more. But fortunately, um, the state is not sponsoring or supporting all of this. Mm -hmm. That is that is one good thing. Um, the other thing uh, you mentioned about assumptions. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You see, I think one difference that the Pakistanis have to make, and this links with what happened in Sweden um, uh, yeah. a, few, a few weeks exactly. ago. As a Pakistani, as a Christian, I strongly condemn what happened in Sw Sweden, and it should not happen anywhere. And for anybody, for, and, and for, for anybody. any religion. And for any any religion but true. the thing is, what happens there should not be linked to the Christians or Over anyone here. True. else True. over here True. and we shouldn't be feeling unsecure and unsafe because someone has done something in Europe or in America or, or wherever and, and at all levels yes. there's a reason there's a reason because imagine that unfortunately that yes. you know time which we have had as Pakistanis from 2005 to 2015 where unfortunately there were a lot of suicide attacks you know and certainly the world was labeling it for the Muslims to to be the ones who are doing it and right at the same time if there was a gunfire uh, incident in US they would say that you know that the person is not mentally fit right exactly. you know so, so, so that's how I want people to understand that it does not have to do anything with the religion in the first place exactly. it's that individual's mindset and what they wanted to do probably you know I don't know you know when he woke up and he thought about unfortunately desecration of the Holy Quran ladies and gentlemen it does not speak speak about which religion he comes from. Exactly. It speaks about what family he comes from. And I think that everybody needs to think on these lines, which is why I would want to move sure. on to Professor Saab over here. So Prof Professor Saab, now our apotomy is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the beacon of hope, life, peace for us is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life. What can you quote a few ahadis from his life where he has spoken mm. about how mm. Muslims need to be with the minorities? I think that's uh, what's going to encompass the entire uh, essence of this conversation. Uh, in fact, the thing is that uh, uh, the whole life of uh, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam was what he used to say. He used to practice that, and uh, you uh, you look at uh, his reception to uh, the Christians of Hira, and at the same time. Uh, look at, uh, again I am referring to Misak e Medina, so he practiced that he equally he uh, gave the rights of uh, uh, pr proper citizen of that very state of Medina to everyone. Yeah. Uh, he uh, did not discriminate uh, between them on the basis of their uh, religious identity. At the same time you look, uh, Prophet peace be upon him said that I am sent to humanity. So what does it mean? And at the same time, look at uh, what his behavior was to all around him uh, having differently uh, religious identity yeah. ha habits. And one thing more, uh, what I would like to say. Look, uh, uh, this is our uh, general habit that we always say that the half glass is empty. Why we are not saying that the half glass is filled as well? The thing is, I just give you, <laughs> <laughs> I just I give you this example that uh, one of our uh, uh, largest province uh, area-wise is Balochistan. Yes. So look at when uh, this uh, 1947 uh, that uh, partition was uh, happened and a lot of migration uh, was over there. But at the same time, the Khan of Kalat, mm. he uh, guaranteed the honor and uh, the uh, religious uh, liberty of uh, particularly uh, there are a lot of Hindus over there in Khuzdar, in Las Bela and in a lot of other places. So still they are living very, uh, what we could say, comfortably there. True. I have myself uh, observed uh, when I was teaching at Bela College and a lot of uh, my students were Hindus and in businesses, the main main bazaar of Bela, there's a lot of businesses with, uh, with uh, uh, our uh, exactly. uh, Hindu uh, brothers and sisters. And one thing more, their their place, uh, which which is called Hindu Mahalla, that is uh, very close to Jam House, means the uh, elite place of that Bela. They are living over there. So uh, I was just amazed when I joined that college that it, this was just like oh, before no. 47. We are living a uh, different uh, identity. Our students were coming, and they were so. Uh, what we could say, uh, having ability, and they were the same patriot as we are. So we must uh, mention these positive and examples. This, this certainly and is an example of how our state is, ladies and gentlemen. And I, we thank you so much sir, for highlighting this. But at this point of time, we need to head out towards a of short course, break. Of yes. course, but before uh, going back, I think we need to also mention that when we talk about the minorities, we're only thinking in terms of religious minorities. Let's yes. also try to uh, celebrate the ethnic diversity that we enjoy in hmm. Pakistan, right? So we're going on a short break after that. We're going to come back and have a very interesting And I have a very, I have a three set of questions, you know, and it's just a yes or no, and we'll realize by the way we are. Okay. Let's go on a break.
you. Okay, welcome back and we were having a very interesting conversation before yeah. going on to the break and obviously when we talk about celebrating the minorities and obviously we established that we are very uncomfortable with this term in the first place because we say that we are all Pakistanis with different shades and with different strands in the first place. Uh, so we are thinking in terms of the religious communities, right? But I think it's also time that we celebrate the ethnic diversity of the Pakistan, right? They're the, also the communities that grace Pakistan, that grace our land and contribute to our development. So to talk further more about it, what does that mean and how does the role of Pakistani it seems to different sort of or shades of Pakistanis that we have. So we've been joined by a new guest and we are very glad that she has graced our set. Um, she happens to be Ms. Har Simran Khan Arora. She is a development practitioner. Assalamu alaikum and thank you so much for coming to our show and welcome to our show. In the first thank you place. so much for having and me. And at the same time, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Jaggi as well. You know, thank you so much for being over here and contributing to our cause where we certainly wanted to raise more awareness. But now coming back to you, an important day for all of us, you know, where we're exactly. talking about minorities shouldn't really be a day. We've spoken about it. But you know, where Hajra has mentioned that it's not just the religious minorities we're talking about. You know, people can have very different ethnic backgrounds. And how do you think inclusivity needs to prevail when we talk about Pakistan? And intersect with the Pakistanian, the idea of Pakistanian. Um, so I feel that inclusivity is a concept that is very individual. So every person uh, should, you know, feel inclusive whether they're a minority or not. So for example, uh, let's talk about the education sector. So in the education sector, if we come to the education sector, we yeah. have seats for minorities, we have seats uh, for people from Balochistan. You know, very sorry, but we have already spoken about okay. it where, you know, me and David Saab okay. are not, okay. you know, in, in uh, we're not going to comply to yeah. the quota system. We want open merit, you know, so that there can be a bigger percentage of representation. And, and, and let's yes. talk about how do you but feel that's our about opinion, Pakistaniyat yeah. in the first place. <laughs> I'm not imposing it. Yes. Okay, so Pakistaniyat, <laughs> I feel like that is a concept that is introduced to us when we're born in Pakistan. Right. So uh, th that is something that is very personal to every individual that's and true. it comes from where you grow up, it comes from your home. You know, you see people um, in your in your streets and in your gullies living with each other. Where were you and born? So so I was born in Sialkot. In Sialkot. Yes. How's your Punjabi? Because, you know, the uh, best part about mm -hmm. Sikh community is that I've always loved their Punjabi. Yeah. The way Actually, they speak. I mean, if, if uh, they told me this is English show, but... Badiya, bilkul badiya. Badiya, bilkul. Hey, Sabna Ji, I'm going to say that I'm Punjabi, I'm going to say that I'm going to say that. You know, this is the beautiful diverse culture that we have spoken about and we'll shed light on it more. But there are three questions which I'm going to ask you. Okay. You know, so and, and I'm, we're very happy that, you know, we have a Muslim representative over here. We have a Sikh representative. We have a Christian representative. Yes. We had a Hindu representative, which we can see right now. So I'm going to ask her as well. You can raise your hand. Okay. So the three questions are, when it comes to dispensing justice, do you think that there's any uh, inclination towards that the Muslims are going to get more justice than, you know, anybody who's a Christian or a Sikh in Pakistan? Is there any precedence of that? I, I don't think, I think what I said initially, it's the haves and the have-nots we should have a rule of law across the board. People should mm -hmm. feel that when it comes to justice, they will be treated equally. Is it like that? Uh, n sorry, it's not. Sorry, it's not. Uh, what okay, about so I, I think it is uh, based on how much aware you are okay. of your rights yes. and of the actual policies and the law and regulation. If you're much aware, I think it's equal for everybody. It's equal. Thank you so much, sir. The thing is that uh, we, we can't deliver a sweeping statement uh, in any case. Uh, this is not just particular to uh, minorities, but uh, the thing is that uh, justice must prevail, which is not properly prevailed. Justice delayed is justice denied, denied. okay, that, that's it in this case. Okay, so the next question is when we walk into a government hospital, do they ask us that, you know, whether you're a Muslim, Hindu, Sikh or, you know, a Christian and then they treat us or do you think it's open for all, you know, if you walk I in like with me, are they going to treat you uh, first or do you think that they're going to treat me first? I've never cr come across that. So you've never been to a, a no? I mean, no. I've been to hospitals, <laughs> but I've never come across yeah. an incident. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're on the right yes. track. What yeah. about you? Yeah, so I have been to hospitals, but I've never come across. You've never, something obviously, like that. sir. Have you? No, no. I think uh, there is not such thing prevailing in the hospitals. People are treated as patients. Yeah. Not Wonderful. Uh, so one last question. I think we're on the right track, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. We've done sixty percent. Jaggi, you want to say something? Yes or no? Okay, it's wonderful. <laughs> Okay, sir, one last question. That is that when it comes to dispensing of education, do you think, is, is there any discrimination amongst children being admitted to schools? And if there is, you know, please share an incident. Um, 
Not generally. I wouldn't say generally, uh, but there are incidents which happen. So I, I, I won't go into details at mm -hmm. the minute, but I would say um, not generally, but there are individual individual incidents that do take place. Wonderful. Right. What right. about you, Miss? So I've worked in the education sector. I've only seen the opposite because we <laughs> do have special, you know, uh, preferences wow. for, that's for that's people. True. That's true. That's true, sir. Uh, I already mentioned the uh, 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 <laughs> I talk to the different religiously uh, communities uh, in uh, different part of our country and uh, they are equally treated right. and uh, rather as uh, she said uh, they have uh, more privileges I think so. So right, this right. certainly uh, sets the uh, tone right and I That's would want true. to kind of appreciate the government of Pakistan yeah. for all of these years that they were able to kind of achieve all of these achievements. These are milestones which every okay nation has to achieve in the first place and then kind of move on with b bigger and, and better goals. And, and, and this aligns us with the conversation that we were having that we do not have a state-sponsored discrimination in the first mm. place. And thank you so much, Shazad, for in another way putting it Shukar out, here, <laughs> out there. Uh, so you have a brilliant mind, alhamdulillah. Uh, but now let's carry forward a conversation and Harsimran, we will come Dekhi to you. Punjabi <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, <laughs> Punjabi <laughs> <ji gal karla. laughs> That's wonderful. So coming to you and since you've been in the development sector uh, but obviously we, we, are, we are a third world country our state do not have the resources to cater to each and every community out there to cater to each uh, shade or strands of Pakistanis that are living out there so what are some of the initiatives do you think uh, which stands out in your mind uh, and, and in terms of more interfaith hum, harmony or community in the first place um, so some of the initiatives I feel like Jo Hamari local organizations and the local CSOs uh, they know what's up on ground and okay. they know what needs to be targeted and what needs to be you know resolved mm -hmm. so they are really working on interfaith harmony inclusivity yeah. and other projects like this for example the work I'm doing the work um, the NGO I'm working in uh, they uh, cater to interfaith harmony and they've been you know doing workshops and dialogues promoting uh, intercultural dialogue and they're, uh, they're bringing the youth forward so uh, the local people over here are taking initiatives and I think uh, the government as well when they take initiatives they're bringing the youth forward and yeah. they know that you know we need to educate our youth and we need to tell the youth that uh, we can live as a society and we can live together and even with single national curriculum I've seen yes. books where they how they yes. have integrated you know people True. from different walks of life different yes. ethnic backgrounds and it's I think it's for our future generation it's going to be better and even you know today's kids who are on uh, laptops and iPads all, all day long I don't think that they certainly are going to even think about this issue which I'm going to thank Allah for that you know now we, we're bigger than this you know so that's not where we are but you wanted to contribute and add something. No, I, I, yeah. I mean, just just on a candid note because you have mentioned sure. the single national curriculum yes. and uh, the way sort of you know other communities have been and we've had in. you speak about it before <laughs> too <laughs> i know and you know i just want to share over here you know when we were sort of looking at the single national curriculum and they were including uh, you know personalities from minority yes. communities in the uh, in the curriculum and i came across alexander graham bell as a christian hero and i said Come on. Uh, number one, he's not a Christian. He's a scientist. He does not believe in God in any way. And how can Alexander Graham Bell be a Pakistani Christian hero? You know, so we we, we so have you know, to when it comes to science, these. anybody can be our hero. People no, no, have people no. have made Elon Musk no, no, their I'm, hero these days. No, no, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just I'm just saying sort of you know let's let's be sensitive to yeah. that as well. I mean, you want to add Alexander Graham Bell and then you leave Cecil Chaudhary out of it. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's, that's not. I, 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 I think we have a fair share of justices, so, so Chief Justice Rana Bhagwan exactly, Das, exactly. who had made na Justice Cornelius, Cornelius, Justice another Cornelius, another you know. great yeah. name too. But now let's talk about, and I think let's address the elephant in the room, sure. which is what are the hurdles in the interfaith harmony, uh, especially when we talk about it on 11th of August in the first place, right? I think we should, and we have to move from this notion of interfaith harmony. Okay. Let's have the social harmony in the society yeah. first. Okay. And let's start yeah. taking each other as equal human beings right. and equal Pakistanis. Religion is my personal thing. And let's sort of, you know, let's move towards that. Give, respect everyone as Pakistanis, give everyone the space and let religion be everyone's personal 
think. Thank right. you so much right. for saying that. And that's exactly what me and Haja over yeah. here have been mentioning that we do not want to label it as minorities. We do not want to talk about, you know, how it is always labeled as interfaith harmony. And I think that the think tanks really need to sit together right. and make sure that they kind of create a jargon which actually kind of gives out a message of equality more yeah. than labeling somebody with minority and how things are with interfaith but, but, harmony, but, uh, you know, uh, on a societal level. Uh, uh, thank you for saying that. And when we talk about the think tanks and you mentioned important point because they are the creator of the knowledge in the mm. first place. Uh, and when we talk about the knowledge production, so I think on social media, there's so much polarization and there's so much divisive ideologies in the first place that also harms our uh, patriotism, nationalism yeah. in the first place. And, and it's it exactly because of this jargon. Exactly, exactly. So how do we deal with that? Uh, Simran, please go ahead. The, the, the jargon the so, on social the media. The social media, the polarization that is on the social media and which is creating a so lot of ideological... Because if we use these things, then we will go to the same answer. I baar -baar. think we need to you know, start looking at it from a positive side. As he said, I mean, as he said that we need to you know, move forward from the word interfaith harmony and everything. But at the same time, I think we should acknowledge that there is diversity in Pakistan. And you know, why not use the 11th August day to celebrate that diversity instead of just you know, going about that these minorities are in yeah. hai, wo hai. So let's just celebrate the diversity and the presence of minorities in Pakistan. And now can and you say the same thing in Punjabi, please? <laughs> okay, why not? Yeah, why please not? go ahead. Achha, so, I want to give you a message. On the 11th August, there are a lot of people who know about this. I think it should be known and people should celebrate the minorities the presence in Pakistan and the rest of the communities and diversity that are present in Pakistan should celebrate. You should be able to get out of here. Professor <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> Saab, now I think coming down to you, how would you wrap it up for us? The thing is that uh, my uh, point of view is that uh, for instance you were mentioning this national uh, curriculum so in this, this national curriculum, uh, we have crossed uh, some barriers. Mm -hmm. uh, look at that before that uh, single national curriculum. There was just, uh, uh, instead of Islamic studies, the students, those who are not Muslims, they have to study ethics. Right. Yeah. So uh, this was uh, yeah. something which was there. Now there are uh, four or five books for those who are Christians, uh, mm -hmm. kids, in schools, they, they could study Christianity, uh, Sikhism, at the same time, uh, Hinduism. So mm. this is a, a positive step. Uh, at least we should appreciate what is uh, we already doing. But th uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. And we all have to do this thing. But here, I must say that this is not an inter-religious harmony issue, but it, this is intra-religious as well. Mm. So we look uh, in totality the issue instead of just highlighting one one True. part of uh, an issue because if we want to resolve if we want to resolve we have to diagnose properly. Exactly, and right. just one last question, sir, and uh, it it'll be certainly from from you and you. Mm -hmm. And what I would want to ask is that where we have spoken about how yes. you know me and you agree that okay it shouldn't be really a, a quota system, but for all of those people who have been representing minorities, who have been at the helm of affairs, who have been within that quota. Do you think that they have done enough or do you think that, you know, they might have not done enough to contribute to this very cause which we are talking about today? I think, I think there is always space to do more. Thank you. Yeah. There is, there is always space to uh, do more. And I think those people are doing well. But of course, of course, you know, as we move forward, you know, uh, yes, a lot can be done more. Um, and just before we finish, because um, yes. Harsimran said and you have said, mm -hmm about minority yeah. so i think let's next year let's not celebrate the minority day but the diversity day yeah, yeah. Uh, you know exactly. sitting over here yeah. Yeah. Uh, and let's have that program but yes. i think yes uh, yeah let's but all of us again, move together. Why we need to celebrate our diversity for, for one particular day? Exactly. Why not celebrate yeah. it every, every day? Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Exactly. So it's all about diversity, equity, and inclusion, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Which is why, towards the end, I would want my, um, in a way, well-learned co-host to kind of speak about it. So, Haja, how do you see the future of Pakistan? Because when we speak about the dispensing of justice, health and education things uh, look pretty much normal alhamdulillah right alhamdulillah and i think we are uh, going in a good direction in the first place yeah. and we hope and pray and obviously we talk about that there's always space to improve and there's always space to go further and uh, that is how we want our future to be and we want to be better version of ourselves so that we can contribute towards our country our uh, patriotism and nationalism because it is us 
who needs to take initiative in the first and, place. And one of the examples we've had over here in our PTV World Studios happens to be Mr. Jamshed Sultan. You know, he's friends with everybody, alhamdulillah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think our tribute to him too as well towards the end because it's all about inclusivity, equity and uh, diversity. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, for everybody who's out there, look after yourselves and please make sure that you do not uh, segregate on basis on religion. True. And that's something which even our religion tells us and that's something which even their religion tells them as well. So ladies and gentlemen, have a great